Did he? What? No, no, go back to. Fuck. Sakurai and I made our way across the plaza and in front of the tower all the way over to the nearby Suwahara Bridge. She was the one who led me here, though I was trying to avoid being separated by Shiro. She cunningly lured me to this place without me even realizing what she was up to. I gritted my teeth in frustration, knowing it was too late. Shiro. Would that edit be alright? I'd seen with my own eyes that his confidence was not misplaced, but that didn't mean he could beat Wilhelm. I'd hoped he would try and escape, but also, I also knew, irritatingly well, that he was not that kind of guy. Sakurai heaved a sigh like this was someone else's problem, despite her being the very person making me this flustered. I didn't even. What? Fuck you, Ren! Sakurai's lips formed a faint smile as she gathered the answer from my expression. She then lunged at me without even waiting for me to reply. Shit, that was fast! Okay! Her legs slid gracefully along the ground, rising upwards to deliver a kick to my solar plexus. I crossed my arms to block the attack, only to end up being launched into the air. A strike from her right fist soon followed, leaving me with no time to recover. It hit me dead on, knocking me away. God damn it! This is the first time a girl had ever punched me this hard. Some guys might have been into that, but I sure hell wasn't. What a sexist. She did an absolute number on my chin. Hell, her punch felt so strong, it, even enough to, to, to ha, I can't even talk anymore. Hell, her punch was felt strong enough to tear it through iron plating. Sakurai was one of them, no doubt about it. He had enough power to kill people with ease and had no qualms about using it. Besides, I'm not grouping you together with normal girls anyway. That last comment... I don't... He... He was obviously comparing her to a girl! <sighs> like a normal human average girl! And then he's like, no, I'm not gonna compare her anymore. <laughs> the fuck? Then... Oh, uh. Sometimes I don't understand Ren. Sakurai charged at me again, dabbing her elbow towards my stomach. He then grabbed my sleeve and lifted me up, performing a shoulder throw. The blow on my back left me choking for air as I grew dizzy from the smashing on my back of my neck, back of my head. My vision grew dark, but I still made out. I twisted my neck and dodged right before she could cross my face with her boot. The asphalt cracked with a dull sound as the impact once again set my body flying. Sakurai caught me and hurled me aside. What? That made me sick. While trying to ignore, endure the violent pain caused by crashing into the bridge's steel frame, I recalled something Sakurai had once said. You can hardly even consider something as the caliber of a rain, right? That's her voice, right? Pain signaled that one body, one's body was in danger. My right, my arm might have been in good shape after being driven into the concrete, but the intense pain I felt was clear proof that Sakurai's axe posed a deadly threat. Right. It was a lethal weapon. Fucking grand commentary by Ren right now. It could kill people. Yep. Good stuff, Ren. Just like back then. Just like him. An abnormality, the existence of which warps the very fabric of common sense. Sakurai glided towards me in pursuit. Her speed and strength were both staggering, terrifyingly so. But so were mine. How on earth could she do all this without hesitation? Oh, 
I grabbed her fist mid punch. I was scared in pain and about to throw up. They get a kick out of reducing someone to a state they themselves would never want to be in. Did that make them feel alive or what? Bullshit. It had always been difficult to deal with in more ways than one. And the fact I kept meeting her under these circumstances only amplified it. No, I'd never once lost sight of my initial goal. I remember the rage that shook my body that night. I hadn't forgot the vow I took. I teach those bastards a lesson for laying waste to our everyday lives, no matter the cost. I recalled her saying she wanted to attend school some more. A hint of amusement slipped into Sakurai's tone, her arm still being locked in place by my hand. With my gaze a clear reflection of my burning determination and the strength in my hand ready to crush her very bones, I went on and put my resolve into words. And with that, I pulled on her arm with all my might, flinging her behind me. <laughs> my th throw shot Sakurai right through the fence and up into this night sky. Even I found myself surprised by the ri ridiculous strength behind the move. But now was not the time to rack my brains over it. What I was, what I could do, what and what I meant to accomplish. I'd have all the time in the world to worry over moral and ethical bullshit once this was all over. For now, I'd keep myself focused on the situation at hand. In other words, I didn't care if I turned into an irredeemable piece of shit like these assholes. If I had one wish, it would be for Kasumi and Himuro to never learn about this, about what I had become. Ah, oh, fuck, goddammit. I turned into a bona fide lowlock myself. What? Ah. I dashed through the hole Sakurai made in the fence and gave myself to the air. The surface of the water was about 20 meters directly below me and I couldn't move my body mid-air like she did. Sakurai on the other hand managed to turn around mid-air with little to no effort, going as far to deliver a kick towards me without any sort of foothold. Just what the hell of a exquisite- what? What the hell kind of exquisite weight shifting technique did she use? Magic. Arrogant. Uh, <laughs> we exchanged kicks and punches while falling and as much as it pained me to admit it, her technique far surpassed my own. But that said... Over the deafening howl of the wind during our rapid descent, I could make out hints of passion, admiration, and excitement in her voice. I had no idea what she was so happy about, but would betting but we'd be hitting the water in just a few moments. What? Sakurai aimed a kick from above at the back of my head while making a comment I couldn't possibly ignore. I blocked it in the nick of time but ended up crashing into the waves below, sending a grand column of water shooting up into the air. Ridding my teeth at, an, at my embarrassing defeat, I immediately got up and surveyed the surroundings. Where did Sakurai land? You know what? I'm so glad they put in the effort for all the voice acting, but very, very few to no effort to maybe a little bit of animation or extra images like going the battle. Battles, plural. I don't know. Just my feelings all over the place it was the one i couldn't believe sakurai was standing atop the, 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 the sakurai was standing atop the water her words may have been oddly self deriding but her skill was genuinely certainly genuine a girl and one roughly around my age no less who managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bunch of war-crazed veterans of over 60 years. Was this how the so-called prodigies were? It wasn't making a lick of sense to me as usual. Sakurai 
言ってもああなんだか少しベイたちの気持ちも分かってきたあなたとても腹が立つわ At the very same time, I could feel my breathing growing ragged, alongside an overwhelming wave of pressure that made my body feel like it was about to sink. Yet on a completely different level, I was generally felt something akin to a lack of oxygen. Sakurai's smile appeared faint, weak, and somewhat unstable. She had always spouted her nonsense with a composed look of hers, but could have all been no more than a mask, a charade, on her part? Sakurai Cast her gaze downward ever so slightly, her shoulders trembling from laughter. With a chilling smile still on her lips, she hurled her naked, exposed feelings at me. What? Huh? What? <laughs> at first, I didn't immediately understand what just happened. But I was once again staring at an empty air with the surface of the water far below me. Part of the sea was boiling, emitting waves of hot steam. It's weird that the steam is yellow in color. The place I'd been standing had been turned into pits of hell in an instant. Impossible. How in the world had she generate that much heat in a split second? <laughs> Her words cleared my doubts in an instant. The source of the inferno was Sakurai herself, capable of generating staggering levels of heat out of seemingly nowhere. Actually, not quite. I knew the source. I looked down from above. Sakurai met my gaze from below. What? What? Sakurai could condense the heat, mold it into a form, and wield it as a weapon, a true embodiment of raging flames. A sword of blazing scarlet, siphoning oxygen from the very air around it. No wonder I couldn't breathe earlier. It appeared I had seriously pissed her off somehow. I couldn't stand her, and the feeling appeared to be mutual. I may have been over. Oh, overly obsessed with my peaceful life, but that didn't mean a bunch of war crazed assholes had the right to complain about it. He met my descent through the air with an upward sw swing of her blade, which I blocked with my right arm. I didn't hear the sound of tearing flesh and bone, only the metallic clang of two blades clashing against one another. Sakurai and I both found ourselves propelled backwards. My right arm began to shift form in response to her bloodlust. My cravings to behead my foes, materializing as a blade dark as midnight, forged for the sole purpose of decapitation. I just about have enough of her. Uh, I just had. Oh my god! I had just about enough of her. The moment I uttered those words, I kicked off the surface of the water. There was no special trick behind it or anything of the sort. I simply kicked off the water before my legs could sink. It was, in a sense, or rather, with absolute certainty, feet of strength more overbearing than magic. However, having powers that allowed me to justify any kind of over-the-top nonsensical feat had long since made me discard all semblance of common sense. I simply believed I could do it. A 
A combination of my strong will and firm self-confidence gave me the impetus I needed to unleash that immense power without leap, without having someone to teach me how. I could feel my very own fighting spirit tempered by Sakurai's hostility, making me concentrate every fiber of my being on emerging victorious. Dashing across the surface of the water parallel to me, Sakurai launched a series of slashes admirable in terms of speed, yet quite easy to project at the same time. I pegged her for the stoic type, but she seemed to have about as short of a fuse as Kasumi, making her both reckless and stubborn to a fault. What was I to do next? I should have gotten used to luring quick-tempered people into traps. How would I go about angering her further? And what would I need to prioritize to achieve that? My words? Conduct? Something else entirely? We'd interacted several times before, so there had to be a hint in there somewhere. I just had to remember it. Countless memories and feelings welled up within me, forming a whirling jumble of a mess in my mind. Even after racking my brain for what I felt like an eternity, I couldn't for the life of me come up with a sound enough idea to base my strategy around. All I ended up with was more violent impulses accompanied by a thirst aching to be quenched. Why couldn't I come up with something that I- uh, Why couldn't I come up with something when I needed it the most? I couldn't think straight. <laughs> Nickering, Sakurai dodged my attack with little to no effort before finally speaking up again. I didn't get it. Even though her words registered in my brain, I couldn't comprehend the deeper meaning behind them. All I knew was that my attacks weren't getting through to her at all. Wait, hold on. Had, by... Had my attacks been too dull and predictable compared to hers? Sakurai's attack pattern underwept an abrupt instantaneous change. She sent the thrust my way without any prior warning, launching a kind of attack I had never seen from her before during the entirety of her scuffle. Though her blade was a fire that unleashed a chainly perfect strike. Was she actually Despite having my ear slightly nicked off, I dodged the attack by a hair's breadth again. They really like using hair's breadth. And attempted to regain my stance, however a relentless barrage of thrust left no room for such an opportunity. Each attack flashed with unprecedented speed, elegance, and ferocity. A merciless series of thrusts unleashed with the precision of a trained surgeon. So she really was. Her curved, simple swings were all bluffs designed to lure me into a false sense of security. Sakurai's lips curled into a teasing smirk. Sakurai's blade came extending towards me. She was aiming low for my feet. At this speed, an emergency stop was out of the question, nor could I change directions. In short, there was no way for me to dodge. At that moment, An ominous feeling of discomfort exhaled me out of nowhere, like I'd become a lab rat, a worthless creature trapped in a cage. Now that wasn't quite the best way to express it. This didn't feel like that at all. It was more like being an ant burned under a magnifying glass, watched by someone whose very gaze unleashed heat rays. <laughs> I somersaulted forward, bouncing off the surface of the water like a pebble. I no longer paid any heed to Sakurai's attacks, and instead struggled with all my might to escape that inexplicable gaze. I vaulted off the surface of the water as I tumbled down, and soon enough found myself face to face with the steel frame of the bridge towering before me. Tapping into the momentum I built up, I proceeded to dash up the bridge without a moment of hesitation. <laughs> 
I could hear Sakurai's voice and feel her presence from behind me as she came after me in pursuit. It then finally hit me that my shoulder had been wounded. She must have pierced it open during her previous attack. I wasn't sure if I could call this a lucky break, but having an injury like this, no matter how severe it might be, still beat ending up completely robbed of my mobility. If anything, Sakurai was the least of my worries right now. My mind processed but one emotion. Dread. My whole body was under the control of a fundamental primal impulse. Even though I hadn't been able to think straight for a while now, or rather, that was precisely why. The urge to flee, to run, to escape, to cast aside shame and pride, never turning back. Unless I did that, unless I did, I'd be killed here tonight. However, a certain clingy, clingy fool was still hot in pursuit. It didn't matter one bit. I had no time to deal with her. Hadn't she noticed it? But she, couldn't she feel the sheer terror lurking behind that stare? That nigh irresistible lure towards death? Like the merciful, merciless pull of a black hole? Sakurai, Wilhelm, and Rusalka were formidable opponents worthy to be feared. But they all paled in comparison to the master of this gaze. Oh shit. Um So Um I'm going to end it here. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Sorry to leave on a very very uh uh, uh mid note. I know I, I don't even know what you call this suspenseful note anyways have a good one bye